Welcome to another lesson on linear second order homogeneous differential equations. In this video, we'll discuss finding a general solution to a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients when the characteristic equation has two equal roots. In our first lesson, we discussed how a second order ordinary differential equation fits this form here. And if we can write the equation in this form, then the second order differential equation is also linear. And then if g of x equals zero, the differential equation is also homogeneous. So the types of equations that we'll be solving will actually fit this form here, where the coefficients are not functions of x, but they're constants. And we discussed in the first lesson that we can solve these types of differential equations by using a characteristic equation and the principle of superposition where if the equation is in this form here, using the values of a, b, and c, we can form the characteristic equation, and then the values of r will help us find the general solutions. But the types of solutions do affect the form of the general solution. So in our first lesson, we discussed when we had two distinct real roots, this would be the form of the general solution. And in this video, we're going to discuss how if r1 equals r2, or we have two real and equal roots, the general solution will be in this form. Notice in this form, we have an extra factor of x. So the goal of this video is to figure out where this form comes from. And then finally in the next lesson, the general solution will be in this form if we have complex solutions to the characteristic equation. So to begin, if our differential equation fits this form here, we can set up this characteristic equation and solve for r. And if we have two distinct real roots, we know from the last lesson, the general solution will be in this form here, where the solutions to our equation will be r sub one and r sub two. And remember, this came from applying the principle of superposition, where we found two solutions to the differential equation. But if r sub one equals r sub two, this only gives us one solution, which we see here below. If r sub one equals r sub two, the exponents are the same, and therefore we can add these and factor out the exponential part, giving us just one solution, since c sub one plus c sub two is just another constant. So when the characteristic equation has two real but equal roots, this only gives us one solution. So to find the second solution so we can apply the principle of superposition, we will let y be a function of x times y sub one. So again, y sub one is our solution that we found. So y equals f of x, a function of x times e to the power of rx, which again is y sub one. And now we're going to perform substitution into our differential equation, but to do this, we'll have to find y prime and y double prime. And this does get fairly involved. I've already figured them out, but you may want to pause the video and check these. Here's our function. Here's the first derivative by applying the product and chain rule. And then to find the second derivative, again, we have to apply the product and chain rule to both of these terms. And it happens that we have two like terms, and therefore we only have three terms in our second derivative. So now we're going to substitute these into our differential equation. So notice that for y double prime, in the equation, we have a times y double prime. And for y prime here, we have b times y prime. And then we have our original function here, which is y, so we have plus c times y. And now we're going to factor out the exponential, e raised to the power of rx, as well as distribute a, b, and c, which would give us this equation here. And now from here, we're going to group the f double prime, f prime, and fx terms. So there's only one f double prime term, there are two f prime terms, and there are three f terms. Now from here, there's a couple of things we need to recognize. First, remember r is the solution to the characteristic equation, and this is the characteristic equation. Therefore, for this value of r, this would be equal to zero, and therefore this product drops out. And then for two ar plus b, remember if we have two real equal roots, 
that means the discriminant in the quadratic formula would be zero, and therefore r would just be negative b divided by two a. If we substitute negative b divided by two a for r, notice what happens. We'd have two a times negative b divided by two a plus b. Well, this simplifies nicely to just negative b plus b, and therefore this is equal to zero as well. So both this product and this product are equal to zero, leaving us with a times f double prime equals zero. Which means if this product equals zero, f double prime must equal zero. So now if f double prime equals zero, we can find f prime and f by integrating. So if we integrate f double prime, we can obtain f prime. Well, if the second derivative is zero, that means the first derivative must be a constant, which we'll call c sub two. And now if we integrate a constant to obtain our function f, we would have c sub two times x plus a constant, which we'll call c sub one. But now remember, we started with y equals f of x times e raised to the power of rx. So now we'll substitute c sub two times x plus c sub one for f of x here. And now notice if we distribute, here first we have c sub one times e to the power of rx, and then we have c sub two x times e to the power of rx. And notice how this would give us our general solution when we have two real equal roots to our characteristic equation. So this is where that extra factor of x comes from. So now we just need to remember that when solving the characteristic equation, if we have two real equal roots, our general solution must be in this form here. So let's go ahead and finish by looking at an example. The first thing we need to recognize here is that the given differential equation does fit the form here. So we have a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, and therefore we can find the general solution by solving the characteristic equation given here. So notice that a is equal to one, b is equal to four, and c is also equal to four. So the characteristic equation would be r squared plus four r plus four equals zero. And this is a perfect square trinomial. Let's start by factoring into two binomial factors. So we have r and r. The factors of four that add to four are positive two and positive two. Notice how we have two equal factors. So we can write this as the quantity r plus two squared equals zero. Recognizing there's only one solution here, which is r equals negative two. That's negative two plus two is equal to zero. So this does have multiplicity two, meaning we have two equal real roots. And because of this, we have to use this form for our general solution. So the general solution would be y of x equals c sub one, a constant, times e to the power of negative two x. And then we have plus c sub two times x e to the power of negative two x. So the main thing to remember here is if we're solving this form of a differential equation using the characteristic equation, and the characteristic equation has two real but equal roots, the general solution will be in this form here. I hope you found this helpful.